It's the start of another season, but it isn't a normal start, ladies and gentlemen. If you look in the right-hand corner of the screen before we run this intro, we have 30 mil in the balance. We have 12 mil in the transfer budget. I'm going to tell these guys right now, there has been a lot of outs, there is a lot of ins, and there has been a fire sale after we lost the Scottish Cup final last year. I've gone through and cut out the deadwood, and in today's episode, we're going to show you the players we brought in, the players we've taken out, and the long-term plan that this was the season that we went and turned ourselves into a good team in Scotland to being the best team Scotland has ever produced. <laughs> Yes, YouTube, here we are. It is the start of the season, nearly. Um, but before we get into anything, do hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and let me know in the comment section down below if you rate what we have done here, as we have made a lot of changes. Had to wait until the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle came into the team as well. Um, now that I've signed everybody, we can have a little bit of a chat after we go through all these players about what I think we're going to do. Before we go into any of the players, though, as always, you guys want to know about the season preview and what's going on there. We do not have a player yet in the Media Dream 11, even though Mariba and George Foley now get on the first page on the key players list. Uh, we are predicted to come fourth. We're predicted to play in a 4-4-2. We're very much predicted to be pretty close to that side there, bar a couple of little changes. There's definitely a couple of names in that team you do not know. And well, boys, it has been crazy in the transfer window. We are, of course, live on stream. So links are down below to come look at us live on stream. And uh, look, we're going to go through the players now. So do not worry. I'm not going to put the Twitch intro in just yet. There will be the Twitch plug a little bit later. And then we'll recap how we've gone in the season. But uh, let's go straight into what has been the craziest of craziest uh, sort of time. And, uh, you know, I don't think we brought anyone in. Yes, we did. We brought a couple people in very early on. Um, and there is a lot of players that we need to discuss about what's coming in and what we're going to do. So without further ado, I'm going to discuss these players that have come in on this day here. I don't know why the game keeps putting something down. Um, I'm moving this list. And then we'll discuss the outs and we discuss the players we brought in in the scout Um we had a six and a half hour stream this morning, finding it very hard to find, especially a left back. Uh, but so we found a left back and I can't believe he's here. Uh, but we've got a good squad and I've said but too many times. So let's, let's just get straight in it. Liam Tids is just 17 years of age with a little bit of potential. He's more of a Scottish um, a Scottish centre back that, you know, we don't have any Scottish talent. I can't sign Scottish talent. It's really annoying. So yeah, to get, get in some of that you know, is Scottish, is not bad, but yeah. Eagle, we picked up because he has four-star potential and is six foot five. I'm a sucker for big, big, big center bats. I'm hoping at 18 years of age, if he hits his development, he will be decent enough. Um, our biggest problem this year is going to be who can play in Europe because we don't have any homegrown talent. So yeah, it is what it is. So Eagle's come in with the potential for that. Sergio Crocker is your new best youth prospect. 18 years of age, a name like Sergio Crocker, it doesn't sound too Argentinian. And that's because he's half Welsh, which means he does not need a work permit. Um, Sergio Crockett, as you can see, he's come in to probably play box-to-box -box midfielder on support. Got a few 10s in there, good passing, good tackling, very well-rounded. And I think if he hits his potential, won't just be usable, will be as good as Mariba and, of course, George Foley. And could be one of the long-term central midfielders, or could be someone we sell for a nice amount of profit. Could be bought him in fairly cheap. Uh, lucky last on this list. No, there's a few more to go. Aaron Rolls, Scottish second nationality from uh, Chelsea, has a little bit of potential, just decided to sign him. Um, then two guys that we need to discuss. Fernando Amorim, uh, fantastic winger. Um, great stats, 235k release fee. Played. He's learning to play right wing um, in this role here, but we just highlight right wing. He's not bad. Great all rounded stats, good determination, good passing, great technique, good work rate, good crossing, good dribbling. Just got the good stats to be a good right winger. If Lynch has another poor year, I want a guy to come in and absolutely push him. Yet again, the big goal sign players that are 18 years of old or younger because in three years' time, I expect to be long term in the Champions League every year from here on out nearly. And we need these players for European football to stay here for three years, become homegrown, and develop into monsters and sell them at 22, 24 when we have got more talent that we you can produce. Lucky last on this list is Fabio De Franca. Unfortunately, we picked him up when he just turned 19. Have a look how good he is as well. 2.2 mil release fee. Very well rounded. Got great stats, dribbling, finishing, technique, and physical. Was going to be the first choice striker. 
I'm going to tell these guys right now, signed another striker to be first choice. And that's because Fabio De Franco was happy to be a squad player. But secondly, I think long-term Sané will eventually get sold and Fabio will be up front with the other striker we're about to show you. I will say that I think Fabio is the guy that I think will become the best striker we've got. If you have a look at him, he's barely been here. He's playing games. Have a look how good Fabio De Franca looks. He looks fantastic. Now, let's get into this season here. That is correct. There is $30 million worth of sales. $30 million worth of sales. That is correct. Firstly, Matchley Dijala had a, a 9 to 11 mil. Um, great player, but when you sign Amarin, who's an 18-year-old for 235K, you can sell your backup right winger. Um, even though I will say Matchley Dijala looks fantastic, to get 10 mil in for him all up front, absolute no-brainer, bring him the money. Next on the list is with Freddie Greco. After that ACL injury where he damaged his cruise ship, never was really going to play for me. We ended up selling him here for a little bit less than probably what I hope. 7.25 up to 9.25. Still really good money considering we bought him in on what? A, uh, it's, uh, we bought him in for, on a free and the Jalo was in on a free. That's already $17 million, million worth of profit. Musa Alaboud, look. Didn't really want to sell him, but wanted to fund other areas. And to be fair, with Crockett coming in, who actually suits the system because he can tackle and go up and down, Al Musa Alaboud is not the guy that can really play the system. He And this is my big thing. We lost two cup finals. Guys coming off my bench couldn't really play the 4-4-2. It was either we changed the system... Or we change how we view our personnel and we go after very good young talent and talent that can actually play a ball winning midfielder, box the box, etc. So with that being said, Musa Alaboud was never that guy. We brought him in with the intention of selling him, and well, we sold him the young boys there for eight million. Esther Sockler missed too many chances, and we decided to get rid of him. 2.5 mil out the door. Very, very thank you and thankful for what Eska Sokla did. Had a couple of really good years for us, and last year was not particularly great. To get him off to the J-League is fine as well. I uh, did not mind that. Estachio at 31 might be a bit of a shock to people that he's gone after having a few good years, but at 31, approaching one more year left in his deal at a two-and-a-half star with his declining stats, I decided to cash in for 1.7, and we got rid of Estachio. Uh, we also got rid of Mark Hanno, who played a few games out last time. Was never going to hit his potential and be good enough. Trey Obrey has a 50% sell-on and 500k. No, he was our hot prospect, but I just don't see him hitting his potential. Um, and Lewis Saul, who he brought in many moons ago, is gone out there and has been sold as well back to the USA. So that equals $30 million worth of people that we have got rid of. Now let's talk about the players that are here. Firstly, Augustin Santayana has come in to play right back. Great long throw. He's very well-rounded. Him and Gumney can switch in and out. I think it's better to have a better backup right back with Gumney and have this guy starting. Um, yet again, experience. We have a lot of young players in. To bring guys of experience that have been there and been around the trap is good. I think this guy does a job. I think Augustin Santa does a very good job of the Uruguayan International. Staying on the same mold, I couldn't find a left back for two and a half hours. Then Ferland Mendy pops up that he was interested in coming. More than just interested in coming, Ferland Mendy only wanted 9.75k a week after being released by Aston Villa, where he played nine games in the Prem at a 7.1 after playing at PSG only a handful of years ago. I cannot believe Ferland Mendy is here. He's your new starting right back. If he plays more than 15 games this year, he will stay on for another year. It allows Sean Field to learn off Ferland Mendy and develop as an 18, 19 year old German left back. And it gives us an opportunity to have a more experienced player come in and join the team. I think he's fantastic. Ferland Mendy's there. Absolutely love that as well. We then really struggled to find a left mid, but we found one in the end called Ho Jose Rojas. Now, Jose at 19 years of age isn't 18 and can't be homegrown here at the club for future, but he really does have his physical ability. Determined and got good technique. He's also got 14 pace acceleration with 16 agility, 15 natural finish, and 15 stamina. He's someone that you can just plug in on the left-hand side, tell him to run, and go quick. Him and Ashton Mule this season will probably fight for a little bit of game time, but I think over time, Rojas will hit his potential and grow into a monster. When you're bringing a guy in like this for 2.4 million, which is a lot of money for us, I think it's a no-brainer because if he hits his potential and he starts playing really well, especially in Europe, this is a guy that we're going to be able to sell on for about 10 to 15 20 million to make good profit. Lucky last is Claudio Stormamore. And look, I think Claudio is a fantastic footballer. I will say the one thing I did not like is he was fickle when we scouted him. He's now got a personality trait of balance, which I absolutely love. Maybe because he's come in and realized that he's around some really more professional footballers. 
Not been cut for Chile at 19 years of age, which is odd, but what he does have is technique, off the ball, flair, finishing, first touch. Very good at advance forward. He comes in to be our best striker. I think a front four that is of Claudio Amadou Sene, who's predicted to win the Golden Boot this season, according to the game, has scored a hat-trick on the opening day. Lee Brennan off the bench with that physicality being able to go. And Fabio De Franca, who, by the way, I think will become the best out the lot because of how well-rounded his stats are. I think we have got a very, very good team this year. That means if you have a look at the team as it stands right now, it is a centre net, uh, Augustin Consa, Tekawi, who's fast becoming one of the better centre-backs in the league as well, and... Ferlin Mendy. We have Rojas, Mariba, Foley, and Lynch with Sene and Stomar and Sto Sotoma. I think that is a fantastic team. There is still Deadwood to be sold in this team too, so there is money floating around, and we've done okay. On the opening day, this team did win 4-5-1 there against Motherwell. Nearly said 4-2 because I've worried the 4-4-2. Absolutely dominating here, which is great. Uh, we looked very good in this game. That good that I'm just going to give you the goals because it was mostly the new team. I will say Aston Mir on the left-hand side is probably good enough to be playing for us right now, but it is what it is. Here are the goals for this first game, and then we're going to cut away, and then after the Twitch intro or, you know, Twitch plug, I will be back with the recap of the first month and our Champions League fixtures. As you can see, Amarin keep finding Sene at the back stick, which is fine. Uh, Santa Ana has got a long throw, but doesn't use it there. Gives it back to Sene, who scores a hat-trick. That is a finish into the bottom in. That is superb from him. And then we have a couple of goals from the other half here. Ashton Muir with the ball. Cuts it to Sene. He finds the far corner, which is superb. And our lucky last goal for this one here is Mariba with the ball. Finds Ashton Muir. Falls to Amarin. Back to Mariba. Comes inside. And he hits one into the far bin, which was a great goal. So straight away, we look pretty good. The game reckons we're finishing fourth. We've spent a lot of money. There's still 30 mil in the football club. It's going to be hard for us, especially with Champions League money, to probably make a loss this season. We're in a good spot. This is the first time I look at that balance and I go, you know what? We can do a lot of things with the facilities. We can start becoming one of the best teams in Scotland. And we've got a team with a lot of potential that could really do some damage in this division. You, yes, you, follow me on Twitch. You watch all my content live and, of course, all the VODs for all your viewing needs. The Twitch is the place to go and for funny clips like this. Pietro Pellegrini is a freak, up. mum. Honestly. Pietro Pellegrini is a freak. Well, our season just changed, YouTube. The predicted top goal scorer of the league, Amadou Sene, could be out for up to seven months. We're going to send him to a specialist. He's out for three to four, so August, September, October, November. He's not back until the end of December, so we're going to lose him for a whole half of the season. Just... Oh, wow, that's a kick in the gut. I spent all this time trying to find a striker to get four strikers here, and then we lose our first choice striker for something ridiculous. That sort of injury makes me want to sell him now, but can't sell him. It's very, very annoying. A robust challenge in training. Yeah. I've never never seen that one before, but sure. An accidental collision and he's out for four months with a hip injury. Sure. That's disgusting. Well, YouTube, we just made a couple of more big signings, and these will be the last couple of signings that we really need to touch on here as well. Uh, Damien Sturrock is one, and Hugh Van Yuan is the other. Uh, Hugh Van Yuan is one of those regens that come out from uh, Norway, but also have Vietnamese nationality. He was Molde's best player, and he's come in to be a little bit more of a backup here, but worth quite a little bit of a fee. Uh, we spent a little bit of money on him, five mil with clauses, but... We should be able to make that money back. What I really like him about him is that he's physically pretty insane. A lot of 13s and 14s, only 18 years of age. In three years' time, will be homegrown here. And with the mentals and the physicals, he's that next level of wonder kid. And that's the kind of level we've achieved now. We're able to sign those next level wonder kids that are really good for now, but also will develop into monsters and probably be moving on for 30, 40, 50 million in the future, or if they develop into absolute monsters. So straight away, I'm very happy that he's come in. We're going 
going to work his defensive positioning and just go, yep, just get him as good as possible. The next one is Damien uh, Starik as well. Uh, very good defensive fullback. Uh, absolutely love the look of him. He's got a release fee of 12 and a half mil. Um, so I'm hoping to tie him down moving forward as well. Was their best player as well. And a Slovenian international with four caps already. What I like yet again is physically very, very well-rounded, got decent mentals and has got good tackling, marking and crossing. So what I'm hoping for moving forward is a guy like Damien Starek can actually fight to come into the first team right now behind the lights of a Santa Maria. But more than likely, if he develops his attacking side of the game, will become a player that, for me, will actually be starting second half of the year and hopefully develops into his potential. So that's what I've done now. I've signed both of them as well. Damien's contract was very, very small. It's, interesting. it's weird saying my own name. But there is his contract on screen if I do this. Now, uh, 875k plus 350k after 50 games, 20, 250k after 20 games, which he'll play for Slovenia, and 100k once within the league. It's absolutely peanuts for him, where there was five mil with clauses and everything like that in the other player as well. So that is a very, very, very big player to get in for us. We have a look now at the team. They reckon we're playing Damien Starrett, Terkawi, and the new signing over uh, the likes of a uh, of a console, which I'm definitely not. Um, but yeah, look, very happy with that uh, as as a team, and you know what's moving forward. So I think your best team now looks with Damien uh, coming in at right back, back up, and Huan coming in for Ogilvy and Gumney wherever he is. Doing this, I actually think longer term when Sene is back, we actually teach Damien Stararic, who's got a decent left foot, to be able to play left back as well, and then that way there he can actually sit on the bench second half of the year, cover two spots, um, like Gumney can, and then actually have an extra midfielder in the team. Which when Sene is back, two strikers and have a midfielder, etc. But yeah, that is the plan. That is the team. I think we're in a very good shape. The fact you've got the experience, uh, Mendy and Santa Ana, with these couple of younger fullbacks and centre backs coming in is insane. I think we've got three centre backs that are just going to be the best centre backs in the league. I'm very happy with this. We're all very happy with this. You know, arguably we could be doing this from minute one. I'm not I'm not, not going to drop Consite out of nowhere uh, either. But yeah, what a fantastic time. What a fantastic set of players. That is the team and the squad. Let me know who your favorite player is down below. We've obviously got videos above me on this side and this side to the 442 that we've been using forever. And of course, to the uh, actual series so far to so you guys can catch up. I'll see you guys next time. Still got over 20 million in the club. Still got nine mil. Um, and we need to go and show you guys some Champions League football next year. And that will be the start of the next episode.